My name is Eli Kranzberg and welcome to Mach 5 version 3 explained. In these videos we're going to go through everything from A to Z. We're going to look at managing all the sounds and programs that ship with it. We're going to look at bringing in third party sounds. We're going to look at how to edit the sounds in the main body of the window here and much more. Now to get started when you open up Mach 5 or any new plugin for that matter if you're like me I kind of get overwhelmed just looking at the interface I don't know what's going on what's where it's kind of like going on a blind date you're meeting someone new for the first time a new plugin and you want to get to know each other now what I like to do is just sort of get an overview of how the whole plugin interface is laid out and that's what I want to do in this video just give you a quick walkthrough now, as you know, Mach 5 works in either standalone mode or as a plugin. Right now, we're looking at the standalone version. I'll probably be using it mostly as a plugin within a host DAW throughout the videos, but there's not really much difference operationally between standalone and as a plugin, notwithstanding some of the basic setup that you need to do for the standalone version, which we will look at in another video. But for now, let's start with the basic parts of the interface. Now, to break it down, right now we're looking, first of all, at an empty instance of Mach 5. There are no sounds loaded in. But to break it down, we're looking at basically four main areas here in the interface. We have the sidebar section over here. And then we have the master section up here, this toolbar at the top. We have the display area, the main body of the window over here. And finally, we have the status bar at the bottom. So those are the four main areas of the interface. Now let's start with the sidebar. It basically consists of some sub views over here. We have the parts list that we get at clicking this first in these tabs. And that's used to basically load sounds and manage multi-timbral operations. Because as you know, Mach 5 can be used multi-timbrally, meaning you can get several instruments happening within one instance of Mach 5. And you can get up to 64 MIDI channels and virtually unlimited number of parts or sounds happening all within one instance. When I say virtually unlimited, I mean based on your CPU resources. So that's the part list for managing the multi timbral operations, loading sounds. We have a tree editor over here, and this basically displays things in a text-based hierarchical view, and it basically shows us the parts settings, things like layers and key group settings. Now, these are elements that comprise what the program to use the Mach 5 terminology, what the programs consist of, and programs are basically instruments that consist of layers and key groups and other things, and we can manage that in this tree list over here. We have a list editor over here, and this gives us a text-based list view of the part, the program, the layer, the key group settings, that kind of thing. So basically, in this area over here, we're managing parts. Each instrument within Mach 5 is referred to as a part and within a part, you load in a program. And here we can manage some of the settings for each of the programs. So here we have elements for the part, for the program, for the layer, and for the key group. And they're kind of blank now because nothing's loaded in, but we manage all these aspects of a part from here. And then we have a browser over here, the sidebar browser. And basically, this is used to browse the load programs. But we also use this to add oscillators and effects and event processors to our programs to add sound design elements to sculpt the sound more than the factory defaults. So that's basically the part section over here, the sidebar. It's used to manage parts and programs and adjust basic parameters. We have the master section on top here. And basically this provides global settings for the entire instance of Mach 5. Now to start with, we have the file menu over here. You click on this little wrench icon and that's used to save and load and manage programs and multis. Now, I said a moment ago that here in the sidebar area over here, we manage all the parts, and within each part, we load in a program. So from here, we manage the programs and multis, and what a multi is, is the entire state of a Mach 5 instance. So if you have several parts loaded up with several different programs, that's all contained within multi, so you can save it and call up or recall a multi that'll recall all your parts with all your programs that are loaded in. And the programs themselves are comprised of smaller elements, which we'll look at later in these videos. But that's what a multi is, basically. So we have multi controls over here. We can select previous and next multis. Right now I have none. We got the multi name over there. We can double click on it and open up a big multi browser, but I'm going to close it for now. And we'll look at the rest of the settings here. Now here we have the display area tabs, and these are used to switch between three main views. We have the main view, mixture view, and performance view. Now in the main view, we have these sub views over here. First we have info view, 
And this will display basic information about the program that's loaded into the currently selected part. And you select a part by clicking on it. We only have one right now. I'll create another one just so you can see. There's nothing loaded into either one of them, but we select it by clicking on the part like that on the icon or anywhere where there's no actual control to click on. The icon is the safest part of the name. Now, this will display info over here. So basic info and also show macro controls in the keyboard here for triggering the sounds. Next, we have an edit page over here. And this is the main body of Mach 5 where the heart and soul of each program is designed. And this contains different sub views over here. We have oscillator editors, key group views, modulation, etc. We can customize what's displayed, what's hidden or revealed with these little filter buttons here to filter various elements of the edit window. We have an effects rack over here. And this is basically used to add effects processing at various stages in a program's architecture. You can add it at different places. We click on the plus button here. We can get different effects that we can add in. We have an event rack over here, and it looks similar, but basically we access event processors to process MIDI events. We can add things like arpeggiators, micro tuners, and script processors by means of these submenus over here. Next up is the mixer view, and this is basically a little internal mixer for Mach 5. We have the different parts over here. There's aux sends, aux returns. We can insert plugins. It's a whole little mixer unto itself. Next, we have the performance view, and this allows us to create kind of meta programs that involve many parts from potentially different programs, and you can layer them and crossfade them and create different key ranges to create your own sort of meta programs, and you can program external controllers to control various aspects of them. Once we leave this part of the display tab, we have here some metronome and transport controls. And these are used basically to control tempo and playback for loops when loops are being used. Now, normally you want loops to follow your host DAW or play at their internal tempo, but we do have some additional control over them here. And we have a global volume and tuning control for the overall instance of Mach 5. And last up at the bottom, we have the status bar all across the bottom of the interface. On the left, we have the version number. And we can see here that I'm running in 64-bit mode, which is the default for the standalone version. And just a little aside, if you want to start up in 32-bit mode, you go under Get Info, select the icon in the Finder, go under Get Info, and there's a little checkbox to start up in 32-bit mode. And you might want to do that for compatibility with some of the other Mode 2 plugins. But in general, try and stay in 64-bit mode. You can take advantage of all the advanced memory addressing and RAM allocation that's available in 64-bit mode. We have basically an information area here, which is kind of like a little help tag thing. Let me go to the edit view here, and you'll see when I move my mouse around, it displays info on wherever my mouse is pointing to. So a nice little visual feedback to see what you're controlling. And then we have RAM and CPU usage, and this is for the total instance of Mach 5. You can see it on a per part or per program basis in the list view, but this is global for the whole instance. So that's a little welcome overview, blind date, get to know each other kind of tour to see the main areas of the Mach 5 interface. We have the sidebar over here used to manage the parts and programs. We have the master section on top here controlling aspects of the whole multi. We have the display area over here for editing the programs and finally the status bar at the bottom. Stay tuned, see you for more in the next video.